Hi there, this is Matt Miller with Imperial Dade. Um, just working with my customer Ron here. Grand Rapids, Minnesota, LNF Supply. And we have a Betco Fiber Pro 8. 8 stands for 8 gallon tanks, carpet extractor. Uh, we're just working on cleaning up these inner uh, entrance areas where we get a lot of ice melt salt residue built up in the, the uh, carpet matting. Uh, it gets really crusty and uh, so we're trying to knock that down and get this cleaned up. Uh, anyway, just a brief overview of this machine. Uh, you got an 8 gallon solution tank here on the bottom, holds 8 gallons of hot water is what you want to use to extract with, rinse and extract with. And here's your 8 gallon recovery tank with the uh, dump hose on it. Um, pretty basic you have a uh, agitating brush underneath here you have a vacuum chute to, to suck up your dirty water there's a port here in case you want to hook up an upholstery attachment with a separate hose kit there's a solution hose um, connection um, here's your height adjustment for your brush and how you adjust that is you start out as high as it'll go. Uh, you'll come over to the control panel here. You'll turn on your brush. You'll hear it turn on. Come down here and you drop the lever until you hear that brush make, make contact with the carpet. And then you just go one extra, one extra adjustment forward and you're, you're good to go. Uh, I'll shut that off just for a second. Set the camera to actually run. Uh, can you just hold that? I'm going to set the uh, dirty water and the recovery tank back on the uh, machine here. Ron and I actually just finished up extracting this area here. We pre Now, the best way to do extraction cleaning is to pre spray the carpet with your chemical and water. And what we did, we mixed up a solution in this pump-up sprayer. It actually has a battery-operated head. Um, these can be purchased through through us at Imperial Date as well. Um, but we just spray down. Uh, I'll just do a quick demonstration. Spray it on a. Just wet the carpet like this. Again, this is your ice melt remover chemical mixed with, uh, you know, lukewarm water to hot water. Before you do all this, you want to make sure you vacuum the area first before you do any of this. Absolutely. Thank you, Ron. Uh, that is very important, actually. You have definitely dry vacuum this carpet ahead of time just to get those little dirt granules out of there so you're not overtaxing your carpet extractor. Uh, <laughs> just gives you a fresh start. So that way when you're using the chemical on the carpet extractor, you're mainly, mainly you're breaking up those soils and grease and residue, carpet ice melt residue that's really just baked into the carpet basically, just rusted in there. Um, the only time you don't want to use an upright vacuum on this, of course, is if the carpet's really wet. There's a lot of snow and slush trapped in. You obviously do not want to get that sucked into your vacuum cleaner. It will damage your motor. And if that's the case, then by all means, only use your carpet extractor because it's designed to pick up, you know, right. liquids and not not be affected. So, so yeah, make sure you, it's not wet. Yeah. You know, uh, if it's dry, just go ahead and vacuum it real good. Yep. And things continue on. Yep. And then do your pre-spraying. Pre-spraying, yep. Pre-spray the area you want to tackle and uh, give it a good 10 minutes dwell time. That gives the chemical a chance to uh, react with the ice melt residue and start neutralizing it, breaking down those soils so they're easy to pick up with your machine. Now your machine, all we're doing is filling that solution tank with hot water. And basically that's your rinse. Um, 
You're going to agitate the carpet with the brush. You're going to shoot hot water into it and pull that the soils and also the chemicals back out of the carpet tile. Uh, and you know, with the vacuum running. So, uh, what else here? Yeah, your spray jets, of course, put down the, the hot water. Um, another good idea, before you get started, your dirty water tank here, put a splash of water in the tank and then maybe one ounce of a defoaming chemical. One ounce of defoamer. You know, you're talking not even a cap full. That's all you need. Drop that in your tank. That way you don't get a bunch of foam buildup when you start extracting and uh, run into issues with foam. Uh, you want to uh, show them how to get started? Yeah, so so uh, Ron and I, which yep, you saw, we just pre-sprayed this area as an example. Um, with this particular extractor, we turn on the brush first with this main power. You'll hear the brush turn on. Then we'll turn on the spray jet. That gets your hot water running out the front and then your vacuum. And then you simply pull the machine backwards at a nice, slow, steady pace. And you can watch the dirty water coming through the little window here into the dirty water tank. And then when you get done with your pass, you go back down here, you shut the spray jet off, you shut your uh, vacuum motor off, and your main power, which is the brush. Um, and then continue on to the next spot. Uh, one other thing I was thinking of here, and I, it's kind of tough to show you. Um, Ron, can you tilt the machine back slightly? A uh, little more, a little more. So underneath here, you got your brush, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but that pops right out so you can clean it up if you want. And then the spray jets, the spray jets are also underneath here, and you can clean those. They're easy, you just twist them, they thread right off. You can clean them in some uh, vinegar, that'll cut hard mineral scale off of those. You just soak them a little bit, maybe hit them with a toothbrush, that's it. Um, and then when you're done using the machine, you pop this brush off, rinse it out, um, take any carpet fibers or wrapped carpet strings off of it, and set it aside. You always store the brushes upright. That way you don't flatten the bristles while it's in storage. Um, that way it's ready to go for the next user. And then finally, up here in northern Minnesota, as you all know, we get some pretty nasty below freezing temperatures in the winter time January February March April <laughs> pretty much half at least half the year um, if this machine is going to be transported on a, on a truck to another facility and let's say it gets uh, stuck sitting on a trailer overnight well just remember the solution pump in this machine still had water in it so what you want to do when you're done using the machine is obviously drain both tanks, rinse out the dirty tank, dirty water tank really well. And then uh, what you're going to want to do is grab a gallon jug of um, vehicle wind sh windshield wash solution. Right. Yep, the splash. <laughs> and it's rated for, uh, you want the blue stuff at, at minimum, it's rated for 20 degrees below of Fahrenheit. And what you'll do <clears throat> when the solution tank is empty, you dump maybe maybe a quart or a half gallon of that uh, windshield wash in here, and then you'll turn your to turn your brush on your main power, and then you'll turn your solution jet switch on, and you'll watch that spray get it over a hard floor and keep an eye on your jet and make sure you start getting that blue residue pumping through the pump and onto the floor, then you shut it, shut it down. That way you know that pump is protected. And if this machine is in freezing temperatures for an extended amount of time, 
more than likely you will not have a problem with that pump freezing up, expanding, and bursting your pump. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it, though, Ron. Right? I think we, I think we about covered it. So, thanks for your time, and uh, we will see you on the next episode. Happy New Year. Ha, ha, ha.